Welcome to another episode of Adventure Unlimited. Well, we are half an hour from our home in the Perth Hills. Just gone for a little four-wheel drive to, um, to get out to this nice little spot. Perched up on the rocks. We're at the back of, or east of Mount Dale, just off the Brooklyn Highway. Yeah, and so today we're going to do a sort of beers in the shed style video, uh, but out in nature. A little bit of a Q and A, um, what our plans are for the near future and for the extended future. Yeah, we do have some massive news coming, so make sure you tune in till the end to uh, to hear all about what we'll be up to next year and the year after. So I did put a call out on YouTube and Instagram for any questions uh, that any of you have for us. And we got a few responses. Uh, the first one was probably the most common question that we get uh, on the page, which is, why do you always take two cars? So, pretty much the answer that I give everyone now, it's just it's pretty simple. I say to them, do you, when you go four wheel driving with your best mates, do you all jump in one car or do you take two, car, two cars? So, for me, I'm going full wheel driving and camping with my best mate, so we take two cars. Yeah, so when we, when we first met, we both had our current vehicles and they were both pretty well set up for uh, touring. And so, after we first met and we started looking to go on camping trips, it would always be um, a bit of back and forth about whose car we were going to take camping. And in the end, we just decided to stick with taking two most of the time. There is, there's a lot of benefits to taking two vehicles as well. Um, we go to pretty remote campsites and we do a bit of remote touring. So if one car has a terminal failure, we have another vehicle to either tow it out or to get out ourselves to be able to get recovery later on. Um, or go get parts like we almost had to um, at a Panawonica yep. when my alternator checked out. Also, safety in numbers. Um, having another vehicle for recovery is a big win. We've, we've recovered each other multiple times. Um, we do have winches and all the recovery gear, but sometimes you need to be pulled out backwards or you need an anchor point because there's none around, so it helps out. And also, when we when we have done big trips, in particular, um, just in the Land Cruiser, we're definitely a little bit more reserved with sort of taking side tracks and going exploring because we don't have that safety in numbers. We don't have another recovery vehicle. So if we go down a track and can't turn around, can't get out, it's too rutted out. There's a tree blocking it or something. Um, you know, we tend not to not to take unnecessary risks when there's just one vehicle. So taking two means that we can get out and see some places that we probably wouldn't otherwise see. Definitely. Another, another benefit is that quite often we'll go out to a campsite um, we want to do day trips from. So the cruiser's got the rooftop tent and the big awning. So we just set that up as a base camp, keep our spot, and then we go day tripping in the Lux. Your favourite everything. Yeah. <laughs> Car sick. So, so there's many, many benefits of taking two vehicles over one. Definitely. Uh, the next question I had was from Matt, and he wants to know how how we go with me being a seafarer and you getting horribly seasick. As I've always said, I don't have gills, so I stay on land. <laughs> Yeah, um, there are there are times when it's a little bit of a shame that he gets very very seasick because you know for example a couple of months ago we were in Cairns and it probably would have been nice to go and do a um, day trip out to the reef and do some snorkeling and that sort of thing um, but that's just not something that we really look at because um, you just wouldn't enjoy it. <laughs> If it, if it come to the situation where there was something epic to go to, 
and it wasn't too far being on the ocean for too long I just smashed a bunch of quails and deal with it <laughs> um, all right so the next question came from Lily and she wanted to know where the best place was to interact with wildlife thinking about that question the first thing that pops to my mind would be when we went to Cairns we stopped in at a wallaby wildlife reserve centre yeah granite granite gorge is cool um, and it's really really cool heaps of little rock wallabies that you can feed it's about $15 entry but totally worth it and there's other stuff to see and do um, in the reserve a bunch of different walks but um, yeah as um, as animal lovers it was cool just to hang out and feed all the rock wallabies they were definitely very friendly super friendly a bit needy <laughs> so needy a little bit scratchy if they didn't get their pellets um the first place that came to mind for me was actually our home <laughs> yeah well at home we do have um a multiple of pets all native so we've got our nice family of kangaroos we've got a couple of families of bandicoots uh, blue tongue lizards we've got skinks we've got blue wrens we've got finches all the little native birds um, black cockatoos as well yeah heaps of red tail ones on the property um, so yeah just sitting outside in our yard on any given evening we'll see heaps and heaps of different wildlife um, which is pretty cool we're very lucky you're also saying to me that dirt hartog yeah i think um certainly for bird life and for marine life there's not many better places than than dirt hartog island the variety of different birds particularly at withnall point where we were camped right next to that sort of freshwater inlet um was really cool uh heaps of the little what were they the ones that were made a nest in your tent the swallows or the sparrows or yeah they look well they're, they're actually i think they were actually um western brown wrens yeah okay i think the sign said yeah but they had a little red breast no it's brown they're all brown mm. yeah um so yeah that was cool and then also obviously all the all the marine life dolphins stingrays sharks whales like more different types of fish than you can poke a stick at um and for land animals we certainly saw quite a few um little native mice that did on the first night we were at withnall point they took over the campground <laughs> it was theirs we were visitors so we had to go to bed go and leave them to their business i think overall in general we don't actually see that much wildlife on our trips um down the south west of wa you see a lot of bird life um a bit inland emus kangaroos we do see a lot of cattle <laughs> on our tricks around karajini national park a little southern track that we did um if you haven't seen the video check it out because it's one of our favorites but there's like hundreds of cattle just cruising through the national park <laughs> all right so to the news it's not just clickbait i swear it's an absolute i can't even think of the words completely left the field so for the last couple of years we've been prepping the vehicles and just getting ready to do a lap of australia so the main the original plan was to take long service leave at the end of 2023 um january 2024 we're gonna jump in the rigs and do a lap of australia that was the plan um until i got a phone call asking if i'd like to go and work in cambodia for two years and like Paul said when I called him up because I had to tell them by 
that afternoon if it was a yes or no. And he said, you only regret the opportunities you don't take. And that's absolutely true. So I said, yes, let's go. <laughs> it is definitely going to be an adventure. Um, the simple fact is Australia is not going anywhere. The lap can wait two weeks, two years. <laughs> Um, cars will go into storage, they'll be here when we come back, um, and the opportunity to go live in a different country for two years, uh, explore another country, immerse ourselves in the culture, is just an opportunity that we can't say no to. Yeah, absolute once in a lifetime opportunity. Uh, so we're going to take it, and we did talk about whether we would sort of put the channel on hold or potentially start a new one um, and we agreed that we're gonna we're gonna keep it going uh, personally we don't watch a lot of international content so I completely understand if that's not something that you're really interested in um, but we are coming back we are eventually going to do a lap and we're going to keep the same ethos that we've got with our current channel and all the travels that we do at the moment trying to get off the beaten track, away from the tourists, away from the Instagram hotspots, and find some, you know, genuine hidden gems. Um, so that's what we're going to do in Cambodia. So I went to Cambodia a few years ago with a bunch of mates. Um, we did a four-day dirt bike tour through Cambodia. Um, I've kept in touch with the tour guide over there, so hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll be a good port of call for us. So I'll more than likely go for rides with him while we're there and he can guide us and give us some contacts to find some really good, out of the way... Local knowledge. Local only place. Yeah. That's what we want. Um, so we will buy a full drive over there, just the one at this stage. <laughs> so I, I have been on Marketplace, can't help myself. Um, there is so many 80 series Land Cruisers over there um, and really cheap so I've always wanted a wagon I've always always had utes I'd love to have a wagon so it's the time to do it yeah um, so yeah we're gonna we're gonna get something like that build it up so that it can take on some some jungle tracks to get to some off the beaten track places and absolutely pumped so in between now and then um, I've got to go away for work for six weeks or so um, next weekend we're gonna go down south to a spot that we've been to previously but it was before we had the channel so that's pretty cool we'll show you that and then when we come back uh, we're gonna head over to the east coast for probably three four weeks before we go to Cambodia I'm going to catch up with Kalia's family, which is all east-based. So we'll be heading across to Victoria and then up to Queensland and weather depending, fires depending, everything else, time, we'll just work our way. There are a few key points that we want to hit over the east coast, um, but yeah, we'll just have to see how we travel with that one. Yeah, so the big ticket, big ticket spots that I'm keen to take Paul to, because he hasn't been before, is uh, the Grampians, uh, which is pretty close to my old man. Hello, Dad, if you're watching. Um, and the Vic High Country, obviously pending fires, and uh, probably the, the Barrington Tops as well is another really beautiful spot. That's sort of on the way um, for our travels. And then on the way home, we might go inland, we might go Flinders Ranges, but it's going to be incredibly hot. So we might sort of follow the coast and go Florio Peninsula or Air Peninsula, something like that. Um, I haven't done Florio before, so that would be cool. In between now and the end of the year, before we head east, we've got a few big modifications going on to the vehicles. So um, I've had the OTF train canopy fitted to the cruiser a little while ago um, and it's finally going in to get the internal fit out done so all my drawers and shelves and everything will be going in and then I'll have to wire up all the 12 volt which will be very exciting 
And what are you getting under yours? I am getting a brand spanking new G Works tray and canopy fitted uh, to the Hilux. Yep. Um, so that'll be one of the first ones that Sharp supply and fit. Um, so yeah, that'll be a 2000 mil tray, 1700 canopy. They're doing all the internal fit out as well. So uh, drawers, pantry, um, shelves, you name it. Um, 50 litre headboard water tank, trundle drawer, and the under tray toolboxes. So that's super exciting. Um, I, I'll caveat and say, look, you don't need, you don't need the fanciest rig. You don't need all the fruit to get out there and explore. I started off traveling, camping in a work Hyundai accent with a swag in the back and an esky and a cooker, um, and had some incredibly fun times. Um, that said, eventually these vehicles will be our home and having a convenient setup that's water and dust proof, lockable um, and sturdy is pretty important. The tub has served its purpose. I've, abs I've genuinely loved tub life, but it's getting pretty tired. Of, um, I've batted it a few times and the canopy is starting to fall to bits. <laughs> It has had a hard life. It's done a lot of corrugations and there's a few cracks appearing in the roof which you could repair. Um, the seals are starting to shrink and deteriorate. And I did a really dodgy home lockdown uh, insulation job on the inside and ever since I did that it hasn't been dust proof, it hasn't been waterproof since. Um, so in winter, you know, water comes in and all my stuff goes mouldy and um, it's just time to time to upgrade um, and then that way when we do come back if I can take my long service leave straight away the cars are ready to go I don't have to wait um, getting it booked in getting it fitted out that sort of thing uh, when we get back so yeah let us know in the comments what you think about the news uh, whether you're excited not interested um, like I said, we are coming back. We are going to do more of the same sort of stuff in Australia. But um, in the meantime, we're going to take you on a wild international adventure. <laughs> uh, just one final plug. Um, the shirts that we're wearing, the hats and the stubby coolers are all for sale in our merch shop. Um, use the code AU15 to get 15% off. Um, super high quality threads. Uh, really good gear. So if you want to support the channel, then uh, hit up the merch store and get yourself some discounted merch. All right, that's enough talking from us. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, leave us a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to hit the tracks and head home. See you next time. What were we just saying about the canopy falling apart?